Welcome to the Softland Central Podcast, your home for market entry knowledge and resources. Softland Central is brought to you by Softland Partners, an online marketplace to help you find best fit resources for your market entry. Find them at softlandpartners.com. Welcome, everybody, and uh, we're excited to have you again for Softland Central, the home of market entry. And uh, we have a wonderful guest today, Jonathan Grode from uh, Green and Spiegel. And uh, welcome, Jonathan. Hey, Bill. How's it going? Fantastic. So we're here. Today's uh, topic, and, and this will be just kind of a, a quick update on uh, immigration in the U.S. and kind of any recent changes and, and a little bit of forecast ahead. But Jonathan, uh, you know, obviously we have a new administration in uh, and there, there have been expectations in terms of, of changes. Um, do you want to kind of give us a little thumbnail on uh, any changes that have happened in, here in the new administration that might interest uh, folks who are uh, interested in doing business in the U.S.? And then uh, we can kind of dig into it from there. Yeah, and I, and I think it's a great Great question. I mean, the reality is, is like the vaccine rollout's been awesome, right? Especially in the United States, way better than expected. And around the world, you know, most countries are, you know, they're complaining, but they're not that far behind the U.S. Like in reality, <clears throat> assuming there's no crazy variant, most of the world is going to be in a good place to travel come fall. And if you look at what's going on in the United States in particular, like the economy is really booming. There's been a tremendous amount of pent up demand. There's a lot of projects that have been put on hold that are now moving forward. <clears throat> and this is creating a little bit of a disconnect, unfortunately. And it's a real challenge from an immigration perspective because, you know, coming out of the Trump administration, Biden really took like a very positive spin on immigration, the importance of foreign nationals to the United States, changed some of the nomenclature. You know, we don't call them aliens anymore. They're non-citizens, friendlier approach. But <clears throat> merely changing the way you refer or think about immigrants doesn't translate into changes in processing. <clears throat> and that's a problem we have. Businesses are ready to go. They're ready to hire. People are ready to travel from Europe. They want to come in. And like it's still real tough on a bureaucratic perspective. And in fact, with some tremendous irony, Biden has make it, made it harder than Trump. Uh, and that's, that's the challenge that we're dealing with now as practitioners and vis-a-vis -vis the companies that we work with and then the people that are trying to get their workers transferred from, the, from abroad to the United States. So I can give you an example, right? Yeah, I was going to say, if you could, anything you could do to maybe add some specifics. Yeah, so great. like right now, if you're in uh, the UK, Ireland, the Schengen area of the EU, and you, want to trans and you want to travel to the United States, you can't. There's still a ban on travel. In fact, if you've been in any of those countries within the last 14 days, you cannot enter the US. So you have to get a waiver if you want to fly directly over, or you have to go to like a third country like Mexico or one of the Caribbean islands. Okay, well, under the Trump administration, if you want to get the waiver, it was, a, it was a pain, but it was doable. You just had to show the economic impact that the individual was going to provide to the United States and how it was going to help with the economic recovery from the crisis. But pretty easy, subjective argument to make. Biden, on March 2nd, ostensibly changed the entire standard overnight with no notice and made it so that you have to show that the individual's role is critical to the infrastructure of the United States. And... Whereas under Trump, executives, managers, people that were making investment, entrepreneurs, they almost were like the easiest ones to get through. Biden administration is saying, well, we think you can do that via video. You don't need to come into the country. And for us, you know, I, you know, I work with a number of congressional folks and I'm an advisor to a few of them. I wrote them a note and I was like, listen, I thought we were done with this no notice change in immigration stuff overnight stuff, you know. Like it was like such a play from the Trump era. It like really caught everybody flat footed, you know, and then they come and they say, okay, well, look, everything's going better and we're going to do a vaccine passport. And if you've been vaccinated, you're going to have permission to travel and we're going to have a great database and we'll have that in place for May. Well, Bill, today we're talking and it's May 27th and crickets. All right. 
But now they're saying, well, well we're going to have it lifted by the end of June. You know, but I caught some tailwinds from a discussion between the UK and the US, and they don't even have the mechanism to put it in place. France wants this like digital, electronic, I'm vaccinated thing. <clears throat> I don't know about you, man, but I got a piece of cardboard from the CDC that's got some handwritten notes on it. Like, they're not getting me anywhere. Right. Like, I, I don't know. The, there's no, the United States did not create a massive database of everybody who's vaccinated. We know how many people are vaccinated. But we don't know who is vaccinated. So the way I liken it, and, and as you're moving your life to the nautical sense, uh, you know, countries are like cruise ships. They're not a speedboat. They're not a sailboat. They're not like small businesses where they can make a decision and be nimble and change. You know, it takes them a heck of a long time to make a turn. A heck of a long time. And that's the lurch that we're in now. And it's funny because I thought last year was like the hardest year I've ever had practicing immigration law. Bull. This one like takes the cake, man. It is like so intense because expectations have changed. You know, before it was like, okay, we're all in this pandemic, white knuckle, let's hold on to the steering wheel, let's get through this. Everybody's health and safety is important. And the thought about traveling somewhere was so distant or remote that it didn't matter. Now everybody's like, let's get together. Let's hang out. Let's have a business meeting. Like I've been thinking about this for two years now. Like I'm ready to go. But the governments still have this blockade up. And so, I'm hoping it changes, but it's we're stuck. Yeah. So so it's sort of that I think that sets the stage. Are there are there alternatives that you see? And obviously the the, the main road uh, is sort of not available or, or you have to go through, um, you know, uh, sort of countries that, that have a pathway. Are there other alternatives for uh, companies that are looking to, to bring people in? I mean, if they're in country, transfers are getting easier. Biden has eased some of the uh, Trump era policies on like how adjudication standards go. Um, that's been quite a welcome change, to be honest with you. There used to be, there used to be this thing for years and years and years called prior deference. Mm -hmm. Where essentially, like, let's say, Bill, you're getting a visa. You've had the visa for six years. You've had two renewals. You're going to get another one. That new, uh, when that adjudicator goes to look at the new one, they have to rely on the decision of the prior adjudicator. Gives you predictability, allows the company to know that you're going to stay, unless there's something glaring, obvious, or a change in job. You can pretty much, you know, count on that thing being approved. Trump said, nah, we're not doing that. We're going to go through a de novo review process where every time we get a new filing is reviewed as if it's the first time we've seen it. Mm -hmm. And that was like a huge problem for the four years of his administration because ostensibly you got people who don't have the evidence to show that they qualify for a classification because it was five years ago when they came in the country. And I consulted with people that got denials on like L1As, which are for intercompany managerial transfers, they're in like their fifth year. They got two years left. They file in the extension under Trump administration. They come back to you and they're like, prove to us that he was a manager in the UK before he came to the US. And the guy's like, I don't have any evidence of that. They never asked me that for that before. And like, you know, we saw people having to go back and leave. The request for evidence rates went through the roof, bogged down the whole system. Biden's gone back to prior deference. So that's a, that helps a lot in terms of like internal processing, consistency, and that predictability that we want on the visa front. But, you know, bringing people over, going back to Europe, India now is highly problematic. China remains an issue. Brazil's on the list. There's not a lot we can do. Now, <clears throat> you know, even our friends to the North still haven't opened the border. And every month they roll and tell us it's going to extend for another month. There's a lot of, um, let's say, trade winds, keeping my nautical theme going today. There's a lot of trade winds pushing that. I think we're going to see a border reopening in June between Canada and the U.S. That is going to help tremendously. Um, you know, Europe is meant to be, um, you know, really pushing on this idea of opening. I think they're going to have to give over on this digital passport concept. But, you know, I could see proof of vaccination and a test being something that rolls in. 
Um, but it's just a weird time because you got the CDC saying you're vaccinated, you don't need a mask, you can go about your day to day business, everything's hunky dory. And then you got the Department of State saying, we're not opening anything. Like we still got this executive order that says we can't process these visas without a waiver. And it doesn't make sense. And even if you look at like virus counts around the world and we're all like amateur virologists now, right? Like the UK has one of the highest rates of vaccination in the entire world. Right. They got it pretty much under control. You go to somewhere like Peru, which is having an outbreak right now. Terrible, yeah. Uh, Argentina looks really bad. Argentina, yeah. look at the, you know, it's Latin America. They all can just travel here directly with no waiver. Right. So but the logic isn't isn't necessarily there. Yeah, and it like actually plays into this concept of reciprocity, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like who's gonna blink first? Like the EU said that the US like couldn't control the virus and they banned us. And then we're like, all right, well then we're gonna ban you. And now it's like who's going to take away the ban first? And you see little trickles, like as of January 6th, you can go to Spain. You can be a tourist in Spain if you can show that you're vaccinated. So it's moving, but again, man, it's that cruise ship and this turn That's is wide and it is slow. taking yeah. a heck of a long time. So would you expect just because of the low vac vaccination uh, or the high vaccination rate, the low incidence of COVID in the UK, would you expect that to be one of the, the next to open up? You would think, but you know, yeah. then a report came out that like, well, we're not going to have it ready for June. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I yeah. mean, their, their rates are very similar. Ours are even lower right now. So, yeah, I mean, it's very, very similar. Yeah. Um, so it's just, a, it's a, it's a, it's a very odd thing. I mean, you know, for our listeners and people that are dealing with global business, I just say, hold on a little bit longer, be patient with the visa transfer stuff. Um, understand that some people just aren't going to get it right now. And if somebody's got some vacation time and it works into your corporate structure, nothing wrong with a little Caribbean holiday before coming into the U.S. And, th and that we can control. Right. But, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a very odd time. I think that the economy is roaring back. Mm. I think you see it in some of the ways that like the demands on the supply chain has pushed prices for building materials to the roof. You know, I, 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 you and I are avid cyclists. Like I don't really drive very often. I went to fill up my car the other day. I was like, what happened? I mean, exactly. Yeah. So the demand is like really showing that there's growth and we got these fears of inflation and things like that, but these are all a result of everybody trying to get back at it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and this aspect of it is just not developing as quickly. So we'll give, we'll give you the, the Wayne Gretzky, where, where the puck is going question. So uh, for those that don't know Wayne Gretzky, famous hockey player from Canada, was quoted uh, a, a, by a reporter who asked uh, what makes him better than other hockey players. And he said, I, other hockey players go where the puck is, I go where the puck is going. So if we looked, whether it's three months ahead, six months ahead, where would you say this this puck is going? What do you, what are your expectations? Uh, maybe a, a a rosy one and a not so rosy one, kind of. Um, yeah. I mean, from like a realistic standpoint, like I, I I think this discussion, this frustration that we're talking about, I think most of it will dissipate by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping for much sooner. I think, and this is just me being as optimistic as possible that. Um, Biden wants to leverage July 4th and the importance of Independence Day with like a big announcement on like America's open for business and come on in. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be dictated like whether or not we can get to that 70% threshold. I think I was reading the other day, we just crested over 50% of the population being fully vaccinated. I think this July 4th could be a signpost for some big announcements. Um, worst case scenario, I mean, I think we all know what that is. Like one of these variants and mutations is not going to be protected by the vaccine. And we're like back at square one. Hmm. Um, it's again, like the amateur virologist to me seems like when I read these things, cause I, I, I do keep tabs on it. It, it does seem like, you know, the MRNA vaccinations are pretty protective against the variants that exist, which is highly encouraging. I mean, the fact that you have a vaccine that's 95% effective, like that's next to unheard of. So I, I think everything is moving in the right direction. But I think the reality is, is like, just because you're ready to go somewhere, 
It doesn't mean the government is ready to let you go. Mm -hmm. And that is really the rub. That is really the rub. So uh, yeah, I think I think we're headed completely in the right direction. I'm encouraged by the posture and the development of where things are going. I just would preach a little bit of patience and a heck of a lot more pragmatism. And honestly, if global mobility is part of your strategy, have that difficult decision with the immigration attorney or your HR expert in immigration about how feasible this actually is. You know, because where we're getting caught flat-footed in our practices, a business leader makes a decision that they're going to open a new division. They want it open by this date. They got an army of people working to that date, and like the de- the die has already been cast. The contracts have already been made, and then they come to me and like, "Hey, Jonathan, can you bring over 15 workers for July 1st?" And I'm like, "No." Right. Right. Unless they want a vacation in the Caribbean. <laughs> well, but he, you know, the problem is, is that like the embassies and consulates are still not seeing people. So right. if they have an existing visa, that's great. Yeah, go to the Caribbean, enjoy it. But if you need to actually get a visa stamp in your passport, there's only three embassies and consulates that are operating at full strength right now. The rest are like between 20 and 60 percent. That's uh, amazing. So what what countries are the embassies and consulates open? Uh, all fully open, Australia, fully open. New Zealand, and Taiwan. But like, for example, like Toronto. Which is a major visa processing. They're only seeing people on Thursdays. Oh my goodness, that's crazy! Wow. So what does I mean? Like right. you're gonna have to work through the backlog, right? As right, right. well as deal with rule changes. So, yeah. You know, look, I'm all, I'm all for opening back up. I, you know, I mean, my feeling is, is if you're vaccinated, you're vaccinated. So right. let's right. go for it. But it's just gonna take a while to get back. Right, the policy, as you said, it's a it's a big ship to turn around. So it's a big uh, ship. But by the end of this year, I think like most normal processes will be back, and we'll be back to like you know regular expectations. Um, it's just you know kind of yeah. patience, patience, patience. Yeah. I hear you. Well, will you come back uh, in you know uh, next quarter and give us another update? And, yeah, uh, man. Um, whenever um, I. It's, you know, Bill, when I'm hanging out with you, I feel like I'm just talking to an old friend. So I'm happy to hop on and <laughs> chat, chat with you for a few minutes here and there. And, Perfect. Um, no, I think it's important to stay on top of this. So yeah, I, I would be honored to come back next quarter. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Jonathan. This was great. And uh, uh, audience, you know, uh, please uh, like and share and uh, subscribe so that you stay in tune with all, all going on here. And uh, again, Jonathan, thanks so much for the great wisdom. My pleasure. All right. Cheers.